Hello, I'm Rachel. Welcome to my channel. Today I have a video for you that's I'm basically probably going to only be making plant hangers with macrame today, but I might end up doing some other things just because it's going to probably take me like two or three days to finish all these macrames and I might end up doing some other things in between there. Who knows? I never really know. Today I decided to paint stars on a dish towel and it turned out really cute. So I have some black paint on my hands still, but whatever. Um, anyways, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the tea box that I'm kind of partnering with right now. I'm not getting any sponsorships at this moment. They're not sponsoring this or anything, but I want to work with companies right now, like as soon as I could, just so that way in the future when I am actually getting sponsorships, I have more experience or whatever. <laughs> there are actually people that I turn down just because it has nothing to do with my videos or nothing to do with my life or anything. I don't know. Anyways, so <laughs> I've been getting the Sip Spy box and I really like it a lot. I wasn't so sure about it at first, but I was looking at all these other tea subscription boxes and it's the only one out of all of them that I know of that is customizable. They make each box specifically for you and your tastes and what kinds of teas you like. So you can go on your profile and tell them what all kinds of teas you're interested in trying and which ones you're not. I've been very impressed with the selections I've had so far. This month though, oh my goodness, I have been drinking so much chai tea. So I was really happy to get one tea in there by Stash that is a turmeric chai tea. That is so good. The turmeric flavor is not overpowering, it's absolutely perfect. And it just pairs so well with the sweet cinnamon in there and the clove and oh, I love it. I've been adding some honey to it and a little bit of almond milk and it makes it absolutely perfect. If you want, you can get $5 off of your first box by clicking my link in the description. That link does not give me any kickback, but it does give you $5 off. And then if you send your link to a friend that's interested as well, then you get $5 off of your next box and they get $5 off their first box. So that's one of the things I like about this company is they give you lots of opportunities to get $5 off your box. Also, you can do surveys and um, different kinds of things like that to earn points to get $5 off another box or a box for free. That's all about tea, I guess. If you guys are really interested in teas, I, it's one of my passions and just let me know and I'll, I can make a whole video just about tea and uh, it'll probably be one of my favorite videos I've ever made. But um, yeah, let's get on to the rest of the video and making some macrame so I can get some more of my plants up in the air and get my house a little bit more jungly. <laughs> Wait, so first of all, I'm going to be making a pot hanger because I need to repot my Hoya. I don't need to repot my Hoya. I'm going to repot my variegated Hoya. I think it's a rubra. This pot fits over the can that my Hoya is already in. My Hoya is hanging up, but I don't like the plastic cans. So this is just a painted terracotta pot. I've sealed it inside with Thompson's water seal and then I've just spray painted it. But I'm going to be using the like a thicker type of macrame rope. I'm going to cut six strands of this that are three arm lengths because I already have one cut that's three arm lengths so I figure I might as well do the rest that way and with this rope I don't like to make it too intricate because I think that it ends up getting too bulky and strange looking in my opinion with the macrame the way I like to make my macrame so um, I'm not going to need as long a rope that way so including the one that I've already cut it's going to be six ropes that are three arm lengths. So I just take one and I just stretch it out. One, two, three. So now I just need four more. When I am making other macrames, I generally will use like four to six arm lengths, just depending on how intricate I decide to do the knotting. But 
since today I'm not going to be doing that much knotting with this bigger one, it's not going to be a problem. So then I just, I take the ends like this and then I throw them to kind of lay them straight. That way I can get all the ends together and I can find one end from the other because we are going to be looping this around a metal ring. So now that I have the middle part all together, so this part can be such a pain in the butt too because sometimes I mess up and I lose the middle of these and I have to completely redo everything and that is the absolute worst. But I'm just going to do a basic little loop. I put this through here, then get the middle of this and then just pull it through. Try not to pull any ro one rope more than another one, otherwise you're going to lose the centers of everything and mess everything up. We have 12 ropes to work with because each rope was, you know, put in half. So this is two arm lengths now, and that means that we can make three sections of four, and four works the absolute best or at least even numbers. You can work with just three on each section, but it doesn't necessarily always look as good or work as well. Sometimes you have to work with more ropes than that, depending on what kinds of knots you're doing, but I'm just gonna be doing basic square knots on this hanger. So three sets of four is going to work the best. Okay, so make to make a square knot, you need three sections, and we have 12 ropes, so three goes into 12 four times, right? So we need four ropes on each side of this. And to make a square knot, all that you do is make a four. So you have a four, and then you're gonna take this, and you wanna loop it around there, and then bring it through right here. All right, and then you just tighten that up. Now, you need to do the other side, and so I'm gonna take this and make another four, and go around this way. I'm just gonna show you how to make a square knot with just four. All you do is make a four around the two middle ones, and then you take your working ropes. Your ones on the outside are your working ropes. And, oh my goodness, this doorknob idea was not the best. So you can have it down as far as you want or up as high as you want, it doesn't really matter. But once you put the other square knot on, then it's going to make it to where it's much more permanent. I mean, you can still undo it, of course, but it's going to be a lot stronger and it's going to hold uh, this space. So I'm gonna make another four going the other way. And we're just gonna loop this one around this working rope and then pull it through this side and it's going to make this little pretzel <laughs> and let's just pull it tight so there's a square knot once you have a good square knot though you can keep doing square knots down and make ch chains you can do actually one of the things that you can do is you can keep doing a square knot the same way and it will make a twist so I'm just making regular fours instead of doing any backwards fours. And see how it's starting to twist? And this is really like the easiest thing ever to do. See, it's all twisty. But one of my favorite things to do, like one of my favorite chains ever, is doing one where you change your working ropes. You can actually leave it like this and not do a full square knot. And see how I'm taking the middle ones? I'm bringing these ones, the outside working ropes, into the middle. And so now I'm going to use the middle ones for the working ropes. And this is one of those things that will make all of your ropes the same length, more or less, as you're working. So see how it made it different? <laughs> Now I'm going to take these ones and do another working rope down here. So it makes almost this pretzel-like design that I really like. Can you see that okay? 
Is it focusing on me way too much? Probably. This also looks great when you make full square knots. You get that same sort of a shape in the middle here, but a little bit more stability. And these aren't going to move nearly as easily or as much. They're not gonna have as much give. What I was thinking about doing with this one is doing, I don't know what this knot is called, but it's really cool and it's really fun. You take these both in different sides and you take this and this might be a little complicated to be showing for like a basic macrame tutorial, I don't know. But this is a little complicated for me because I'm just learning it still myself. It's just really cool. And then see this one right here is straight. And I'm just going to take this and pull it around this rope hanging out here and then pull it up and over through here and then around itself on this side and through here and make it all look cool and check that out. Is that not super cool or what? There. Now you're a little farther away. Does that work okay? Can you see this? So I made two of those knots where the bottom of my pot, well not the bottom, but the start of my pot's going to be. And then um, what I had done was I hung this up where I'm going to be having it. And then I made like th two of these square knots where I wanted them to be so that way I could mark my spot basically. And so I'm just going to make one more of those knots. I don't know what they're called. If I figure it out, I'll put it on the screen, but I just saw it on Pinterest and I thought it'd be cool to try it and it was all in German. So I don't know how to read specific names in German like that and stuff. So anyways, I know a few things in German, just not a lot. So I don't know what this knot is called. See, that was like really easy. Just make sure that everything is fairly even. They're all pretty good and even. Now I'm going to separate these ones. Like I'm going to take two from ones that are next to each other and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just gonna make the same kind of knot. If you were doing square knots, you would do a square knot here and a square knot here and then you take two down from that and make another square knot down a little ways. But since I'm making this kind of a knot, this is the kind of knot that I'm going to make. Just because I want to try it and see if it looks cool. And if I don't like it, I can always untie everything and make square knots instead. Oh. You can see that so far it has two and then one down here. Now I'm going to take two from this one and then we have this one over here that they need to have one at the bottom as well. And then there's going to be one more from the other two. So I need to figure out where this was along here. So then this is where I'm going to start it and I can always adjust these. These knots are usually pretty easy to adjust. Not as easy as square knots, but still not too hard. Now I just have these two ropes over here to make one with, but I need to make sure that it's good and even with this one. But now you can see I have these ones over here. I have a set of three and then those all connect to make another set of three. And then I'm going to try my pot inside of this. So what I did was I made two sets of these right, but then I decided that I wanted these square knots because these square knots seem a lot stronger than these ones. And so I did basically this, but like the same thing of how I made these, but then I went and I took and I made square knots, those ones that we made earlier up higher on the rope. So, and then I just did a basic 
up and over, not right down here, to secure it once I figured out where my pot should sit. And it worked out pretty good. Here, let me show you. I'm working on a new macrame holder for another plant. I don't know, one of them will go in this. And this one is like a medium weight cord that I got at Hobby Lobby. There's like three sizes there and this one is a medium one. And I'm just using diagonal clove hitches up here and then here with a square knot in the middle. So I'll show you how I do that. Diagonal clove hitches are really, really easy. So four is on one side, four is on the other side. And I'm just going to be having this one go diagonal. Of course, it's a diagonal clove hitch. And all you do is just loop this one around, bring it around town. And always have your lead rope because you're gonna be knotting all of these along on the same rope, like that. And then you do this twice. So up, just right around this and pulling it through. Oh my goodness, somehow the kitten got this from underneath the door and now she's, she won't give it back. Charlotte! No! No, it's mine! Ha! You always have to do two, otherwise it's not going to hold and it's just going to be all twisty and weird and fall apart on you, so. My dress form has come to the rescue. I love this thing. Okay, now on the other side, I have four ropes and I'm gonna do that again. One, two knots. Okay, so you see that this one is a little higher than this one. So that means I'm going to take this side that's lower and use that rope to do one last diagonal clove hitch knot on this side. Okay, now I'm going to take this and continue on down this way. Then I'm going to go back up here. So there's one, two, three, four. So the fifth one up here goes to this side. We gotta bring these back down into another triangle, but first I want to do a square knot in the middle so that way it matches the other side. You don't have to do a square knot in the middle, but the middle part just ends up looking a little loose and messy if you don't. Now just take this one and do just like we did up here. There's more diagonal clove hitches. They're so easy. And if my tutorial isn't clear enough for you, I will have a couple other ones in the description for you so that way you can watch some others. This one is still higher than this side. So even though I've been working on this side, I'm still going to switch this around. And connect them together using that knot. There. So now my sides match and I can keep going. I did the first diamond knots and then I did a set of four square knots and then another diamond knot and then a set, another set of square knots, then another diamond. And then all the way down, this is where I'm going to start for this to go around my, my pot. 
and I did a set of square knots and I'll show you how I did that over on the other side. I started off with one square knot in the middle. I have eight strands and with the middle four strands I made a square knot. Now I'm going to take two from one side and then two from over here and make another square knot. Remember we just make a four. So this is crossed over and then we'll do that again but backwards. And then this part goes under this loop. Then it comes back around out here and there you go. Okay, so now that I have this, I'm going to take these two and these two and make a four. So now we're going to take the middle parts down here, the four middle center strings, and do a square knot to finish this all off. So that that way, this part will go around my pot, sit right here and here, and then we're going to take these two, and then two from over here, and make a square knot there. I could actually do four and four and actually do this again, which I don't know, that might be kind of cool. I'm working on the third pot hanger that I need. I don't know how many I'm gonna get done today, but I need actually quite a few of these. So this one, I, instead of just doing a loop-de-loop -loop around here, I actually just folded this in half and looped it around the rope. And then I did, is this called a lark's head knot? I don't know. But anyways, I'm going to show you how I made this, but using a black rope, so that way maybe you can see it a little better. I just feel like this makes it look very finished to a degree. I'm going to be cutting these off. Here, I'll just show you. Where is my scissors? So once you have your rope like this, lay it down on here. And then from the top up here, you want to just wrap it all the way down as far as you're wanting it. And then, once you get to the end, you just pull this up and you pull all this through, so that way now this went through this little loop. And then, here, this top part, you pull this up. So once you pull this top rope up, see, it's gonna pull that bottom loop down up into here, and so then you lose that loop, and then you just cut off the two ends, and then you're left with a clean knot. Or mostly clean. I didn't quite get that cut short enough. But now I'm just going to make this a very basic, I'm not really going to do much knots. I'm probably only going to do knots at the bottom. And I don't know, I haven't decided if I'm going to make this a double one. I think I'm going to make this a double, double whatever, pot hanger. Because I have a couple of small pots that I need to hang up. And I'll probably put them in my craft room. So now that I have all my macrames done for the day, I am going to repot this plant. I actually took my lipstick plant and I took it out of the hanging pot that I was in. Um, it's just like this one. I popped off all the hooks and then I took the lipstick plant itself out of here and it's not root bound by any means but the soil stayed in perfect shape all around it so I just set it on a rock next to it <laughs> on one of my pavers and I spray painted that pot. So. Then I just put it right back in there, so now I have a white pot that's the perfect size for my lipstick plant, so that way I don't have to worry about, uh, you know, transplanting it into something else. This way it can continue to grow its roots and I don't have to worry about things. I've been trying to get my mini lipstick plant to bloom for a while now, and I think that part of the reason is that it's not root bound in any way but it's working on getting more of the roots towards the outside, so we'll see. <laughs> but first I have to go and repot this Hoya into this pot.
Go in there. Do it. You know you want to. I believe in you. Every time I do anything up here, I always have to clean my poor fiddly fig afterwards. But I wanted to make this lower than this one, just so that way it would look nice. But I've, it's a little low for the plant with the curtain, because this plant really needs a curtain. But with it back a little ways, I think it'll do better. Because the side that's towards the kitchen does a lot better than the side towards the window. Hmm? It's only yours, because there's... A lot of plants. Oh, well, you can keep it over here. You can put it right there if you want to. You like it right there? Mm-hmm. Okay. So if I go and put another plant over here, I think I might have that one actually higher since this goes down farther with the two. I think that might look really nice having one a little higher because I like that right there. Of course, it needs to be hung up on the ceiling so that way it's not right against the window. But those curtains really help when you have to have something against the window to make the light not so intense. I have this pink pot and then I've had this white pot in here for a while, which was nice, except I feel like two different kinds of ceramic pots like that, I don't know. I just wanted something that was a little softer and I wanted more texture. So I'm going to put some macrame in here. And this one, it was the third one that I made and it has room for two pots so I'm going to show you how that looks the plants that I'm going to be putting in here aren't quite ready yet but I'll show you what it's gonna look like anyways I guess I might have to move this one back a little ways because so right here is on my TV it's a I use it as a monitor <laughs> But this is right here, so I think I'm going to need to move this back a little ways. Oh, freaking elm beetles! There were elm beetles hiding in this! Oh, those things are horrible! They've been everywhere. I'm hoping that this year is just a bad year, and that's only going to be something that happens like every decade or so, because they've been so bad. Like, why were there elm beetles hiding underneath this? What? I don't know, I kind of want to have like another one right here and have two. <laughs> this is my craft room, so I can have as many plants as I want, except I'm a little limited on window space. So, yeah, that looks okay. But my string of pearls are not going to stay up here because they need a lot of light up top. And if they were going to be in here, they'd have to be on the bottom one so they could get enough light. But I am going to be putting a couple things in here. I haven't really decided which. I kind of want to put a like um, an asparagus plumosa, one of those kinds of asparagus ferns, because I think it would look really good. I went ahead and I hung up that plant right there. I just popped it out of its, uh, well I just popped off the little things on here because I already spray painted this pot and then I just stuck it in this one that I had already made and um, it has a floofy tail which I do like but makes it a little bit different from the other ones because that one and those ones just have regular tails. I brought in my husband's pineapple and umka plant. These are the only ones I keep outside during the summer just because they actually seem to really need it. My other houseplants 
I don't want to worry about them, but these ones do much better outside in the summer. This one gets spider mites really easily, and I've gotten to where I'm pretty good at getting them to where they don't get too many spider mites. So last winter, they it still grew pretty good and did really well, but usually it really needs a time outside to flourish and not get any spider mites and actually grow really well. And this umka, it's, the root is like a medicine kind of stuff that people use for colds. And it has the most beautiful little flowers. It's focusing on the other parts. Come on. There you go. They're almost velvety. They're so beautiful. Oh, and Gunther got a haircut. Gunther! Hey, look at that. Your beard is all short. Yeah. He has to wear a sweater. It's supposed to warm up this next week and be in the 40s to the 70s. So I'm keeping a sweater on him so that way he acclimates. Huh. <laughs> Poor guy. But it's been down into the 20s, so I really need to bring these in. And, well, I brought them in before. It was down too far into the 20s. <laughs> but they do pretty well with it, you know, still being in the 30s, but not freezing. <laughs> as far as I know. So, Gunther, I'm not giving you snacks yet. No, you don't get snacks yet. Not yet. I need to finish. I repotted the pineapple in this pot that I got on an estate sale. And it's just so pretty. It does have this huge crack, but there is no crumbling. So I'm not worried about it at all. And I just think it has such beautiful character. And the pineapple looks really cool in it. And I have supplements back there because my kitchen's not big enough. So forget about it. But Gunther likes the pineapple too. Gunther, don't chew on the pineapple. These both got a top dressing of what are you doing? <laughs> These both got a top dressing of uh, worm ca castings from my husband's worms. And they haven't brought in any bugs yet. They've been quarantined. So I'm going to go ahead and put them where they're supposed to go now. You're so cute. He loves plants. When we go hiking, he always has to smell all the plants. He's probably smelling all of the dogs that peed on the plants, but it's so cute. Huh. Charlotte always comes running when Gunther gets treats because she knows that she's going to get some snacks, too. There you go. Gunther, you guys stay. Did you just eat her snack?
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please let me know in the comment section below and tell me what you liked about it and anyways I just want to basically know if you guys like these more like I don't know vloggy kinds of plant videos because they don't necessarily do as well as my hauls and plant tours of course but if it's more of my subscribers are watching these kinds of videos and you like them, I want to know so that way I can make more diverse content for you instead of just a bunch of plant hauls and tours, which I think get a little boring and old maybe if you're watching them all the time. I don't know. If you really like those and that's what you're here for, then let me know that as well. So yeah, I'm going to go and making myself another cup of tea. I got this really amazing strawberry tea the other day. Oh, it's so good. And I'm going to clean my craft room because I've been crafting this whole time. It's actually taken me quite a few days to do this whole video just because my mom's had some time off and so we've been hiking and doing some thrifting and stuff and I've also been crafting a lot so I have a bit of a mess to clean up but yeah. Anyways, I still have quite a bit of plant projects to do. I have some plants to repot and some propagations to take care of. I need to switch all that out and everything. If you'd like to see that, then let me know in the comment section below as well. But I might just go ahead and do that because that's something that I do all the time. So I hope you have a really great day and I will talk to you later. Bye! Charlotte. I have all my lengths right here, right? And then as I throw them, wait, Gunther, get out of the way. Gunther. What? You're a stinker. I know, I love you too. No. No, Gunther. Okay, I love you. Yes, I Ow! God, there, you know everything is about you. I know. It should be, huh? Yes, it should. Okay, go away. I have things to do.